Hi everybody! Hello! I'm Melissa. And I am Big T. And this is <gasps> Fresh Cotton Pads! So we've been trying to record this podcast for about three weeks now, but it is impossible to get hold of Big T, either not drunk or not hungover. Or? <laughs> oh, are we allowed to say the other part? Yeah, go for it. Not past it, she's facing in a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever are you talking about, me? <laughs> so we did actually try and record this the other night, but we had a massive gate crash. Yeah, well, shall I say a little gate crash at Vienna? She took over the show. She stole all the camera. She stole all the mic. So I'll post some of the clips that we've got with her. But listen to this as a podcast. I don't think you want to hear crying, banging, screaming, smashing, and tantrums no, in your earpods. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> So, we are finally here. I'm finally recording fresh cotton pads. Three I, weeks too late. I am so excited. Do you know what, guys? Better late than never. So, let us dive straight into the action. So, okay. So, we're going to discuss episode one a little bit. I'm going to ask Melissa more questions about it because I've already spoken about this on the official Challenge podcast. I had a lot of fun. She had a lot of shade to throw as well by the sounds of it. I haven't heard it yet, but I've seen some of the responses online. And they are the nicest. No, some people got quite worked up by it, but it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> my fault you're sensitive. <laughs> you're sensitive, Sally. <laughs> we wanted to keep this episode as well. We really positive and we felt like watching episode one was a very negative episode for both of us, more so T than myself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on the Challenge podcast as well, like, I just want to talk about good times, funny times, fun times. Um, but I don't know if the episode really um, allows that so much. No. What's hard as well with the episode is obviously it is edited down into, like, an hour. Now, in that hour, we get a few days. So, yeah. so much more happens. So much more is said. So many more, like, discussions are had. And more names were men mentioned other than just Jess's. Like, absolutely, we got told Jess wanted to put us in. And then, apparently, we've seen the other girls said our names first. And Hold up, hold up. So, we actually wanted it to be a boys' elimination. Yeah, girl power. Why not? All the way. And all the boys wanted it to be a girls' elimination. Like, they stuck together. I don't see why the girls couldn't have done that. Well. Exactly. Because, you know, it's just like, let's control the narrative. Let's take control of this situation. And coming into the season, let's just show the boys that we are in charge. So what is your opinion on the first challenge? Because Kieran came up with a great plan, in my opinion. And the boys are under the impression that they did all the work and the girls flopped and failed. That is the narrative that they were trying to push out there. What's your opinion on that? I personally think that's wrong. I also do, you know, have to say, nobody listened to Berna, and Berna is a trained circus person, and I feel like the boys kind of just wanted to go along with the boys' plan. Do you think yeah, that's a fair assessment? I agree. I do feel like people should have listened to Berna more, although I didn't like her comments about me and you. Why me and you saying we didn't do the most? Like, there was plenty of other people who I took note of, and so did other people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, with you, it annoyed me because, as you can see from the footage, Melissa and I are two of the last girls to go across the wall. That's because Melissa, like, I handed the boys as many batons as possible, but Melissa actually handed the most well, amount of batons to the boys. So yeah. I personally think because Melissa's my friend, I think that's the reason why people were like, oh, let's just say that she did a rubbish job. But what, what frustrated me is, so Karen came up with this plan, and when we actually, TJ blew the horn and we all run, the plan went out the window and we were supposed to go down like the mud pit in a particular order and everyone just run and dived in now we've done the challenge before we know when you work in a team you have to be more organized and getting down there it wasn't just a case of getting down getting up getting out we had to get the batons up now the boys were picking the girls up and pushing them up so they needed people to hand the batons to them now if you watch the actual clip of the challenge you'll see me and you were on the right hand side mm -hmm. picking the batons up and handing them to the boys and the other girls were just going to, like, to the top. I think a few girls did help out. I can't remember exactly. I remember asking to Colleen to help me, but she couldn't pick the bat on up herself. She's like, it's too heavy. So it was at that point I was like, hmm, no touch. You can't pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> the 
there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I do think that, like, you know, there was some unfair targeting because of, you know, for me personally, I definitely do have a terrible reputation amongst some people on the challenge. So I think my name being out there was just like an easy option for some people. Um, which but I predicted it, it anyway. Like Jay said in the first episode, you know, there's a, a very clear American versus international alliance and we weren't aware. We were completely no, aware. No, we were completely aware, honey. But <laughs> we're also, not stupid. can I mention the hotel thing, conversation with Jay? Um, I think you should because obviously okay. we were in a hotel before. So Sometimes we a lot of always stay in a hotel before filming. And um, Jay was in the room next door to me who was just like, I've got you. What number am I on your list of people to protect? We're working together. And then fast forward to episode, he says his list of people he's working with and I'm not there. I was just like, okay. Yeah, I think he just wanted to like, ditch us real fast. Now. Yeah, he obviously wanted to work with everybody, which it is what it is. It is fair game. Not like, fair game. got their game plan fair going game. in. And but noted for future seasons. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't really. <laughs> I couldn't really expect Jay to be on my side. I did throw him in in total madness. Every twice. single time. The thing is, I've always been loyal to Jay. Always, always. And I've only voted him in. Uh, only voted him in once when he was shady to me first yeah. by revealing my secret vote, mine and CT's secret vote in our uh, season in Iceland. So yeah. They they do say no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> I should have done what you did and voted him every time. <laughs> I was just like, well, no, I tried to have his back as much as possible, but then it got between no, Jay. It, I did. It was between Jay and Kyle, and come on, I'm obviously going to save Kyle over Jay. Oh, yeah, true that. So um, it was one of them. But I went into this season, personally, when I seen, like, all the leaked cast online, I knew I was in trouble immediately because I didn't know these people, and you were telling me, we've got this person, we've got that person, and I was like... Do we though? Do we really? Because we don't know any of these people. They've just done a season together. Like, what can I say? I'm an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a little too optimistic. <laughs> Optimistic went straight into elimination. <laughs> I came into the season like, oh yay, rainbows and sunshine. I've done so many seasons with so many people here that we're gonna have loyalty. Loyalty carries on traditionally from season to season, and I was wrong. Yeah. So that was a lesson to learn. Definitely. It was. Yeah. There was a very clear American alliance. We knew that from the beginning. Oh, we, it's, it's expected. It's like I don't take offense to things like that. No. I think you more so did because you had in your head. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been on our side. Yeah. <laughs> but um, one thing that did disappoint me in the episode is when everybody did decide to put Jess in, it was only T and I that were like, no, let's not put Jess in, let's put a guy in. And we had her back. We did. And then she was so quick to say our names. I like was it, like... Miss and Jess. then to call you down as well, like I was convinced when it when she was choosing somebody, I was like, I know it's me or you. And every time she makes eye contact with you, you're like, <gasps> No, I was blindsided. I was like, There is no way my girl is going to say. You are my so different. You are such an optimist. I'm like, everybody's out to get me. I think I'm a bit delusional. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I my biggest regret from episode one is not being paranoid <laughs> and being too optimistic. Because when Jess was standing in the sandpit, like looking at all of us, I was like, she's definitely going to say Olivia because really? yeah, because I feel as if Jess thought that Olivia was the one who threw was throwing her name about when it came to yeah. a female because the the girl was either Colleen or Jess and. The girls Do you think wanted. It was Colleen. I thought Berna's name was getting thrown around Berna's because of the drama Colleen. that she caused. Yeah, Berna's name was also being thrown around. Okay, quick question. Berna was crying a lot this episode one about her rooming situation. Do you think that's justified? <sighs> okay, so uh, I understand why she was upset about the rooming situation because it is so important. Because those people you're in a room with, one way or another, you become close to them or actually it could be the police opposite you could just clash with them mm, but mm. more so we've always become closer to people and mm. when you're in a room late at night all the talks start happening like that's when you kind of make promises and things like that and even if people don't mean the promises they can make it you can throw it in the face later on you know really? that kind made of thing promises with me well, i've had loads door. of fake promises <laughs> In the boudoir. I have a whole different so boudoir I do, experience. I do understand why Bernard was upset, 
Would I have cried over it? Probably not. No. But there's there's only one thing I really cry over, and it's my daughter. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, like, because going into the season, we were meant to be in a room with Zara, for instance. Yeah. And then she changed her mind. Um, she said that, like, she found out that I'm messy, apparently, and I keep my clothes all over the floor, which is true. Yeah, well, Michelle was anxious to go in a room with us as well because of your messiness. And I convinced her that I clean up all your mess and I didn't <coughs> tell her that I am just as messy as tea. Like, we are so untidy. Terrible. We've actually, like, sent each other videos. Remember when we got back from Total Madness? Melissa sent me a video <laughs> <laughs> of her hallway and it was clothes everywhere. And send her the same video back i was like i hear you i feel you i cannot walk through any passageway in my apartment because yeah. there's clothes everywhere shoes might even find a sandwich in there no well that is when i draw the line you will not find old food like i lent you a bag whilst we were filming she gave it back to me with a moldy pizza in the bottom of it like this girl is the most untidy girl ever so when we actually got the call the way it was weird the way it worked so t got the call for the challenge first and i got called a bit later on and then you got called to say you're a reserve and I was like oh no I want you to be on it desperately so we spent like a month together in my house in Liverpool where we are now where we are now and then um about a week or two later you got the call to say you were definitely on it and we had this massive plan we were like right we're gonna go on this season we're gonna pretend that we don't like each other set pretend that we've had a fallout no way to lie we had not landed and 10 seconds later we were hugging each other jumping up and down screaming and we yeah. were like oh shit we're supposed to we jumped each on each other so much that my wig actually fell off <laughs> do you remember we pretended to have a big argument on the first night in oh yeah we did but we were just laughing too much <laughs> and then we just fell asleep acting was never my strongest point <laughs> <laughs> so funny yeah we were like we, we had a fake argument and then we literally slept this close next to each other I know, we were so close like we basically made a double bed <laughs> and then when we got into the house the house was beautiful but there was no hot water ever like it was lukewarm for like a split second but occasion i feel like you're secretly happy with, about that because that meant that you had to have a shower with me yeah there was me t <laughs> michelle and mariah all used to shower together and we'd like to do a rotation of trying to get in the water like loafing each other's backs and when we'd like rotate around each other you'd just like sort of scrape bums yeah. <laughs> i remember times. kyle was looking for me once and he walked in the bathroom and he just seen all you three in the shower and was like, oh my God, I thought you girls were lying. We said you showered together. No. <laughs> but it's not just something that happened at the Challenge House. We had a shower together. Yeah, we did have a shower together tonight. But yeah. my showers are not lukewarm. My showers are boiling. I, it's unbearable. Yeah, yeah, we really need to discuss that because it was like the boiling pits of hell. It was <laughs> boiling. <laughs> um, yeah, I do like a nice hot shower. That's one of the hardest parts about being away is... The living situation. The living situation. It's hard living with people, never mind having no privacy and then just trying to go and get a nice hot bath or a nice warm shower. It's, I, it's I know what you mean, but with the no privacy thing, like, Mel, we do everything together. I don't mind To no the privacy. levels where it's um, inappropriate. <laughs> Shall we tell them? No. Well. <laughs> okay. Okay. On FaceTime. Yeah. I don't think they want to hear no, that. No, 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 I don't need to hear that. And also, it's an American audience, I'll be like, ew. Cheers to secrets. Okay, so I want to have a segment on this po- podcast called sound or scummy so we need to probably translate that for the american audience so sound means good good like, yeah that sounds that good. sound mate yeah like how do you say it in a sentence like okay i'm oh. like well from liverpool i'm like, my whole, f- like that sound <laughs> <laughs> be like oh do you like this artwork and then you'd be like yeah and that that sound, sound. It means sound. it's good and scummy i think americans should know scummy means not good not good sound scummy 
sound. Okay, so this is a section where I am going to ask Melissa questions. I've not seen these questions, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to put her on the spot. Okay, so here we go. Who was the standout character for you in episode one? Hmm, am I allowed to say you? Oh, darling. I it's feel like episode can. one was your episode. Like, you run the show in that episode. You got the most airtime. You got the most interviews. You were the funniest. You absolutely annihilated Jess in that elimination. You were Thank to you. watch that elimination, right? So, eliminations can be so long and sometimes so boring to watch because you've got to reset, got to go back, got to go forth. And we've got to walk on the stage, off the stage, on the stage, on the stage, get drone shots, get everything. Mm. And with this, with Tig, it was literally she went up in that cage, bam, bam, bang, smashed, done. And it was like, I didn't even realize she won. And I was just like, ah! as you can see, I am my number one biggest fan. <laughs> Honestly, like watching that clip back and seeing you and your reaction is just unbelievable. I've yeah. rewatched it so many times and that brings back really good memories. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. Okay. If it was a guy elimination, which two guys would you have sent down there? <laughs> <laughs> so this right, here's one thing that I haven't we haven't discussed yet. So mm. we were talking about maybe speaking about first impressions of the whole cast. Yeah. Now usually eat cheese and I'd be like, she was bitchy and he had too much attitude and she thought she was too good and blah 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 blah. There's no first impression because the cast was all just so nicey nice to each other. It got to the point where it was borderline not me craving drama. But oh, no, boring. no, you were craving drama. You were craving drama because okay. I was too. I was like walking well, around like oh, why is no one starting that? <laughs> I was like, I'm bored. Yeah. No, but no, the, everybody was just getting along so well that I rem it was so hard to decide, like, who to actually put up for elimination, boy or girl, because mm. it was too nice. And I've never yeah. experienced that in a challenge season. It was confusing. Ever. It's like, where are Usually we? Usually it's just like, bing, bang, bosh, this you're person. going in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on then. Don't beat around the bush. Tell us. The question I forgot. <laughs> Which two guys would you have sent down in the sand? Hmm. Now after watching episode one. Mm, no, at the time. At the time. Answer both, actually. I do, this is the thing, like, at the time, I don't know. Because there's only two guys that I hadn't really had much conversation with at that point, And that was James and Emmanuel. Okay. Now watching back. Yeah. Callum, get his ass down to elimination, say my name. We should put Melissa in. Mm -mm. Love you, Callum, but don't like you that day. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nah. Nope. Okay. Who do you think did the best in the daily? Kieran definitely did the best in the daily. He was so, so strategical. He was so clear in his plan. He had a good plan. He took control. Hats off to him. Well done, Kieran. Well done, Kieran. Okay, so obviously we start off episode one in our own clothes i'm there in my heels even though they told us to wear sports casual i don't no, i don't read emails wear or okay. something i don't read my emails I feel like this mic is really like in my way do you know here we go Ooh. Ooh. Hey. 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 now we're talking <laughs> Okay, so they told us to wear street casual or something. I don't know, because I didn't read the email. <laughs> so obviously, I'm going to show up in my heels. I want to come glamorous. And then we're there in the elimination ground. I'm like, are you joking me? <laughs> yeah. What's the question? <laughs> Who do you think was the best and worst <laughs> dressed? Okay. Episode one. Episode one, best dressed. Hmm. I think Nerese looked good. I think Nerese looked amazing, but not just episode one. In general, Nerese has really good style. She's she always style. looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Always has really good style, and I and always want to one point. Yeah, but she's beautiful anyway. Isn't yeah. she like she's always just looking flawless. Yeah. Worst dress was probably you. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> Are you mad? You had the heels on. Yeah, but I look fabulous. I made the elimination ground look sexy. It wasn't sex. I had to give you a piggyback everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Because it was raining. We haven't even done our first challenge. I'm already carrying this big lump of weight. <laughs> I loved it. I didn't have to walk anywhere. Yeah, and then it broke me back. It was so slippery. Yeah, it was so slippery. Okay, I think that 
I definitely was not the worst dressed, but we will carry on. So as we know, a little kissing game went down, episode one. Who did you kiss? Everybody. Oh, of course. Everybody. That's why I initiate the kissing game to see the best kisser to choose who I want. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who do you think was the best kisser and the worst? You know what, Michelle was a really good kisser. Was she? Yeah, very good kisser. I kissed her as well, but I don't do tongues, but it was... I think we definitely did tongues. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, we you definitely did, did tongues. tongues. And worst kisser, go on. Um, who else did I kiss? I think I just pecked James. Okay, so who's the worst? I mean, it was just Ooh. peck. Ooh. Okay. Was there anyone that... Sorry, who were you most excited to get to know that first evening? Like, who was there anyone that you were like? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm gonna be shady and I'm gonna put her in situations. Um, anyone? Not that I can recall. Oh, really? Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. What about Kyland? Who? <laughs> Maybe I'd already got to know Kyla. <laughs> oh, now, isn't that some tea? <laughs> <laughs> so did you and Kyla do kissing game in episode one? Did you guys? No. No. So you just had to watch you kiss everybody else but him. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't there, who would you have hung out with? I don't know if I want to know the answer to this because I will be jealous. I feel like I am. Everyone would have hung out with me more than a few. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> what? People were avoiding me. <laughs> I had no idea. You know, wait, here's one thing that happens whenever, whatever season you do. If your name is even mentioned, people avoid you like the plague. Like you walk into a room, people scatter. And <laughs> it's like this. Yeah. Every single time. Like, you know when you're going in, by the way, people don't make eye contact with you, the way they leave the room, they won't sit next to you, like, Yeah, because I smelt a rat when I was going around being like, I did go around that night being like, hey guys, what's the plan? And everyone's like, you're the plan. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm not picking up what people are laying down because I've been told I'm working with you and you're not telling me what the plan is. <laughs> But still, I was still in my Tula bubble, sorry, my big tea bubble, and I didn't um, see that as a red flag. I should have seen it coming. Yeah. I feel it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. I'm really surprised, though, I have to say, having watched episode one, how people seem to have thought I'm some threat, politically or whatever. You should take it as a compliment. Should I? I mean, they did play you saying... Listen, guys, yeah. I have not got a plan. I have not got some sort of big scheme. And then 30 seconds later, Melissa, I've got a plan. I mean, that was... Caught red-handed. <laughs> I think that was probably the edit as well, though. No. No, it wasn't that's, not. That's, that's just... That's I remember, that's... like, that video clip, I look really tired. I'm just sitting there and I'm just like... Oh, shit. <laughs> like, but this is, this is another thing that I found. <laughs> there was so much game talk constantly. It got to the point where it was like, okay, we've we've spent the night in the elimination ground. We have done our first challenge. Let's enjoy tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh no, no, no! It was groups and people going around talking, planning game. Which okay, yeah, we're there to play the we're game, there to but play we also the game. have to live there, and we are there to make a reality show, there to enjoy ourselves. Mm. Just relax, take your game hat off, take the game, take a chill pill. Off. and argue with me <laughs> <laughs> guys speaking of hats really quickly i don't know what team this is it's on my Yankees. head okay but just i don't know if you guys heard but i went to new york recently and because i am the queen of new york i'm on the challenge billboard. <laughs> she's smaller than me on the billboard i think i think quit you out sometimes <laughs> I am the queen of. She's the princess. I am the queen. I'm mad. We'll talk about this later. Okay. Look there, Olivia's bigger than both of us on the billboard, and Horatio's bigger than all of us. <laughs> next time, next time, it'll just be me on the poster with you, like. That's who is that? Who is that on there? Who's the little blonde duck? <laughs> how funny! So funny. So how? That's, are we going to talk about this show? We're just going to talk about us. 
I was going to ask another question, but I can't even think of anything to ask. <laughs> okay, well, I've got plenty of questions. How are you feeling about going into are we this season? I have something to ask you. Oh, no. Oh, we feel kind of like, yeah, let's wait. Wait, wait. Do I think I'm going to off on that? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask that on the next episode of Fresh Cut and Pads. Um, well, how was I feeling going How are you feeling season? going into the season? How are you feeling also watching this season? And what can we expect from Miss Melissa Reeves? So getting on the season again. So I was supposed to actually do another season of the challenge, but due to personal issues and drama at home with um, Vienna's dad, I couldn't actually leave at that time. Um, so I didn't do the pre, I can't remember what season it was, mm-hmm. um, so going back on this season, it was very last minute for me, so I didn't really get the opportunity to train as much as I would have liked to have trained, but, um, I just took the opportunity with both hands and run with it, and I thought, I, it was really hard leaving Vienna, mm-hmm. but I knew I was doing it for a good reason, Yeah. and so I was excited to get the opportunity again to go because it's an amazing opportunity and I appreciate it. What um, can we expect from you that we haven't seen from previous seasons? <laughs> because when I met you in Total Madness, I'm not going to lie, I came out of that season thinking you're very calm, very quiet, and I came back home and I looked you up on YouTube and I couldn't believe it. I was like, I can't believe I was in a bed next to that psychopath. I know, crazy, isn't it? See, the thing is with me, I'm actually really, really calm when I'm an absolute, like, loony bin. Like, I just slap, snap and fly off the handle. And I think that's one thing I could probably work on is I do get angry very quickly. And because if I'm passionate about something, I get more angry with it. Um, To be honest, you can expect basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd stick up for myself, I'll have drama, I try my hardest in the challenges. Um, one thing that I will say this season is I felt a lot more emotional and I felt a lot more fear towards challenges than I used to. And I think that's because since becoming a mum, it's like if I die, there's somebody that's really going to need wow. me. So if that's anything happened to me, I panic more. So in the past, I'd be like, yeah, I love this. I was like an adrenaline junkie wanting to do all these crazy things. Whereas this season, when something was dangerous, I was like, I need to think about this because if I get injured, disabled, hurt myself, you name it, if I really, really hurt myself, I've got a little baby at home that needs me. She's only got me. Yeah. So if I can't take care of her, there's nobody else that can. So it does go through your mind more. That's amazing. Yeah. Aww. Okay. I think that we should wrap this up. Yeah, we But are. before we go, I have a question to ask. Okay, so the challenge have posted a clip of my interview from the official challenge podcast. Now, this clip has actually got quite a lot of negativity, which I don't mind because, you know what, like, it is what it is. But there's something that has made me wonder something. Because people are like, why is she calling herself a vet? She's not a vet. Am I a vet? Because I was always calling myself a forever rookie. Then someone told me after you do three seasons, a fourth season, you become a vet. But then some people are saying that's... What what are the rules? No, you are a vet. Am I? I think people will always just have something negative to say. No matter what you do, there'll be a negative thing about it. Sam, don't worry, you're a vet. I'm a vet, I'm a vet. You're a vet, but you're not the queen. Uh, (laughs) Excuse me. I'm going to end this right now. Thank you for joining Bye. my podcast. Bye. Thank you for joining my podcast. <laughs> love Bye. You. Love you. And I'm the queen of New York. No, you're not. I'm the queen of New York. Go away. How you going to have to end it? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. I get the last word. <laughs>